Hello and welcome to the 18th part in this series of videos on programming a chess engine in C. So in this video we're going to complete the setup of a position by filling out the piece lists and material counts on the board. Need a little bit of prep before we start writing the function. In the structure for S board in our defs.h, you'll see that I've changed what were threes to twos here for big, major and minor pieces. I don't know why I had threes there in the first place. And I've added another array on called material, and this will hold the material score, so the value of the material for black and white. The next thing is a little bit of typing in to do that I've already done here. In defs.h in globals, I've added five arrays here, each with 13 positions. Piece big, piece major, piece minor, piece value, piece colour. Sorry, piece colour shouldn't have 13, it should have... Oh yes, it should have 13, sorry. Okay, and what these are, these are simply going to be used to be able to ask the question, true or false, is a piece big, is it a major piece, a minor piece, what's its value, and what's its colour? So inside data.c, this will look a bit horrible. I've got the arrays actually written out here. So looking at piece big, obviously empty is false, white pawn is false, and then knight bishop, rook, queen, king are all big, and then false again for black pawn, and so on. Now I've already put this out and pasted it in because it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just some indexed arrays. The only one maybe that's worth explaining is the piece value here. And in chess you may have heard that people tell you that a pawn is worth one point, a bishop knight three points, a rook five points, a queen nine points. Well, in computer chess you quote values in hundreds of a pawn, so a pawn is worth 100, and with a little bit of experience programming chess engines in the past, I find it's better to have 325 or in old school 3.25 for bishops and uh, knights, 550 for rook and 1000 or 10 points in old, old money for queen. The king's 50,000 but it doesn't really matter because it never gets captured. And this array at the bottom here is simply giving us the colour of a piece when we ask what the colour is. OK, so either you've downloaded the code and pasted that in or typed it all out. And the next thing we can move on to is actually doing this function. So I've started the function off and then I'm going to type the rest with you. And it's called update lists material and it takes in a position as its argument. And just to start the function off, it's very simple. All it does is it loops through every square on the board, has a look at the piece, and if the piece on the square on isn't off board and it's not empty, then we're going to need to do something with it. So all we do is we say if piece big and index by our piece equals true, then position big piece for the oh one more thing I need to add actually sorry is color and it's better if I set colour equal to piece colour, the array that we've just done, because these arrays in their board position are indexed by colour. So I can say big piece colour increment plus plus, and I then need to do exactly the same thing for the minor and the major. So minor, major, and can't remember what I've called these arrays now. One moment. Piece Madge, Piece Min, Piece Big. Okay. Piece Min, Piece Big. And I just want to check in the structure here. I've called Small and then Piece E, of course. Okay, so that sets up the counters for our pieces. Now what we want to do is set the material. So we say pause material for the colour plus equals piece value for our piece which will set the material up quite nicely and what else do we need to set up now we've just got the piece list okay so for the piece list it's actually quite simple it's just you need to think of the way the indexing works 
what we need what we have in our piece list sorry I go back to defs here is an index system here where we say we've got a white pawn and then we've got the piece number here okay so bearing that in mind we can simply say pos p list of our current piece type and now we need to know the piece number well we have pos piece number also for our piece type so say in our example it was the first white pawn well at the moment we have zero white pawns so we would be storing this value at index zero and we set that equal to square so say our first piece was a square on a1 we would be setting this to a1 and now all we need to do is increment this so that's now got a value of 1 so say we now had a pawn on a2 on the next loop we would now be at index 1 here and we'll be giving it a value of a2 and so on so I hope that's quite clear how the the piece lists then work and are updated and the last thing we need to do we need to say if piece equals let's say white king then we'll set pos king square and I can't remember whether I use capitals or lower I use capitals king square for the color equals square and we'll do the same for the black king in fact I can just do white and black here and that should be it that's simple as to set our piece lists up set our material counters up our piece type counters up and the king squares and in fact it's just dawning on me that with this piece list system here which is indexed by piece type probably redundant with these king squares here but anyway we can always remove those at a later date good so the one thing that's remaining is is to take this function defin here definition here and shove it into here just in case we need it anywhere else in the program later on if we don't we can always remove it and that's it I'll just type make for this just to take check that hopefully it compiles it does held my breath there Good, so in the next video, now that we're setting up our pieces correctly, we're going to build something called a checkboard function, which is going to build all of these arrays from scratch and cross-reference that, for example, when we go through our piece list, if it says we've got six pawns on the board, it'll then loop through the board and count the number of pawns and check if that is equal to six, so that we'll cross-reference between our board array and the piece list to make sure everything value we get out is actually correct. And the same is with these, we'll count up the minor major pieces and values, etc. And this proves really worthwhile later on in your program when you're searching millions of moves, because at the beginning of each move search, you can just put an assert in and assert that the board checks out OK, and then you know that there is nothing going wrong. OK, thanks very much for listening, paying attention, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.